the story of that guy with the glasses is a story of a man trading in his hobby for a profession of giving up the security of the everyday and the ordinary in pursuit of the unknown. It's about risk and reward, entrepreneurship, building a career in an entirely new genre of entertainment distributed through a medium which was just then coming into its own. It's a cautionary tale about a man desperately trying to escape his own creation of not wanting to be defined merely by that which he gave life to. The cost of such a decision and the effect it would have on all his future endeavors. The story of that guy with the glasses is the story of the nostalgia critic. It's the story of Doug Walker. What have we learned today, boys and girls? Boys and girls, we have learned that that bridge has officially been burned. <laughs> I say that's an understatement. <laughs> that guy with the glasses, Doug Walker, the nostalgia critic. Even if you're not a fan of his, even if you've never watched a single video of his, chances are you're at least familiar with him or you know somebody who is. And that's not surprising, given that he's been around now for nearly a decade. So it's easy to take for granted the position that he enjoys on the internet, even though it's one that he's worked many, many years at building up. Just a year ago, Doug released a video discussing YouTube and copyright and DMCA issues he and other creators were experiencing on the website. On January 5th at 8.57 p.m., we got an email from YouTube saying that monetization and other account features have been disabled. Two hours later, we were finally able to get into our account to see what apparently affected us. And we found out that we had a strike from Studio Ghibli, the Japanese company, not the American Disney part of it, J Japan, against My Neighbor Totoro, the Disney Semper review of My Neighbor Totoro, which is completely in fair use. And it's fitting. It's a full circle from where he began. Because back in 2007, it's a similar situation he found himself in where every single video he would put up was pulled down via copyright. Even his attempts at circumventing this by creating multiple channels to host each video individually failed. And so that was the germ of the idea. It was the impetus for him going forward and creating his own website. It was around this time that he encountered Mike Michaud and others who were working on Channel Awesome. And the combination of that guy with the glasses through Doug Walker and Channel Awesome through Mike Michaud would lead to what the website has become and the recognition that the Nostalgia Critic has. With the Nostalgia Critic, along with the acquisition of various talents of different video styles and subjects of interest, a user base, a fan base, would slowly emerge. That coupled with smart marketing, merchandising, and ad deals, and a partnership with Blip would see revenues skyrocket. Even back as early as 2009, they were generating upwards of $20,000-plus per month, or put another way, a quarter of a million dollars per year, which isn't bad for a website that only had been around for a few years at that. One thing to take into account when looking at that guy with the glasses during this time frame is that while social media did exist, while there were video sharing platforms, most people didn't strike out on their own. And of those that tried, a majority fell into obscurity, never garnering a dedicated fan base or a following. So the few that were able to accomplish this, such as Doug from That Guy with the Glasses, James from AVGN, or Tom and Craig from Screw Attack, tended to interact in one form or another. I'm the fucking nerd. And there's this guy called the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And he's been talking about me an awful lot lately. I have a bone to pick with one angry video game nerd. So here's my big comeback to you, Nostalgia Critic. You suck. While it's speculated the initial feud with the nerd was instigated by Doug Walker to drum up publicity and interest and generate traffic for his website, James ended up playing along with it, leading to a series of videos where they bantered back and forth. This would all end up culminating in what would become a yearly tradition on That Guy With The Glasses, the anniversary video. The first anniversary video, The Big Brawl, was a low-budget affair. People showed up at a hotel and filmed it over the course of a few days. AVGN, Doug Walker, and assorted personalities from the website all took part, and its atmosphere and mood is very indicative of the early content you would find on the website. 
In fact, the majority of the anniversary videos begins to show a shift in format. And by looking at these anniversary videos, this first one and the three subsequent ones that followed, you begin to see a transition take place, a shift in Doug's mindset about what he wants for the website and what he wants for himself going forward. When looking at the initial first year anniversary video, you get the idea of a guerrilla mindset of people coming together and through whatever means they can, trying to produce something they think is spectacular. It's got a very amateur feel to it. This is when everybody is very new to it. Nobody's jaded yet. Nobody has an ego yet. And you can see that in the interactions behind the scenes over the course of filming. Sweet little innocent little guy that gets punched in the face by Spoonie. People love that. <laughs> People love it when the innocent girl gets kicked in the face. Ooh, root smooch, we are here to rumble! Foo! <laughs> we are here to rumble! Foo! Oh yeah, root smooch, baby, we are here to rumble! That's right, Spoonie. The shift between the first anniversary video, the big brawl, and the second anniversary video, Kick Assia, is a noticeable one. And it's with Kick Assia that the problems begin to manifest themselves because it's indicative of what's going on with the Nostalgia Critics videos and those of the assorted personalities on the website. While it's true that production values are higher, they are beginning to lose the plot on what appeals to the viewership and the user base of the website. And this transition continues onward into Suburban Nights, with each video being less and less focused on the content creator and more and more focused on absurd plots, skit comedy, and secondary characters. And what exactly do I mean by skits? Well, now is as good a time as any to really discuss what happened to the Nostalgia Critics videos, what we see represented in these anniversary videos, and a man who seems to want to run away from himself. When you look at the early Nostalgia Critic videos, what you'll see are cutaway gags, where he'll take 5 to 10 seconds to do a joke related to the video that he's reviewing. An example of that would be this. Waiting for her downstairs. You spidery brat, I'll kill you! I'll kill you! No hard feelings. <laughs> and while you may not find it funny, while it may not appeal to you, it was short in duration. It didn't interrupt the flow of the video itself. However, as time goes on, we begin to see less and less cutaways and more and more skits. And the difference is a cutaway would last 5 to 10 seconds, whereas a skit could last upwards of 2 to 3 minutes. Oh! Shitty CGI one. Christ, is this what people think of when they hear the Chipmunks movie? Yes. <laughs> With the emergence of skits, it became less and less focused on making fun of the video itself, on mocking the movie, or about the nostalgic critic character, and more and more focused on Doug trying his hand at writing comedy. For fans of the videos, this was annoying, because you went from a 5-10 to 10 second interruption that fit in the context of the video review itself, to multiple 2-3 to three minute interruptions that completely ruined the flow of the video. And it's this change in format and change in vision for what the future of the website would be that would lead to a disastrous decision that would have implications for years to follow. When looking at the Google Trends, you see a sharp increase all the way up until the end of 2012, where every related search term suddenly bottoms out. And that corresponds directly to the fourth anniversary video, To Boldly Flee, which, I kid you not, has a runtime of three and a half hours. Now, it's not the video itself that's so awful that's responsible for that decline, but what came at the end of the video and the related follow-up that Doug himself put up. Okay, okay. Uh, the big question, obviously, on everybody's mind uh, after seeing that is, uh, is this it for the Nostalgia Critic? Is that it uh, that we're not going to do anymore, that I'm going to hang up the coat, we're not going to do any more weekly reviews? And the answer is yes. Yes, it is. And it's at this point that everything goes off the rails, because this is when Doug decides to kill the Nostalgia Critic. This is when he decides that he wants to be more than what he is known by. He wants to escape his character and to do new interesting things. The only problem is, he is terrible at it. Whereas the beginning of the website from 2008 until 2012 saw a steady increase, everything from this point onward is a steady decrease. 
and that marked change is directly related to Doug wanting to be a comedy writer. What is Demo Reel? Well, how do I put it? You got movies, old and new, low budget and big budget, appealing to all sorts of different audiences. And as great as all these movies are, in all humbleness, we can do it better. Now, try to envision yourself as a fan of the Nostalgia Critic. You religiously watch his videos week after week, but over the course of years, you notice that it becomes less focused on mocking a video, less focused on the Nostalgia Critic character, and more and more focused on these skits. Until one day, all of a sudden, on the fourth anniversary of the website, he tells you he's going to kill the character and instead make a skit comedy show, not at all related to the Nostalgia Critic, not at all related to the character that you had been watching for almost half a decade. And this was something that Doug was very enthusiastic about. He was going to put more effort and time into it. He was going to use a studio to film it. Hey guys, Doug Walker here. Welcome to the premiere of Demo Reel. Uh, just wanted to give you a little information about the show and how it's going to work. Uh, unlike Nostalgia Craig, that was every one week. This is going to be every two weeks because it takes a little bit more time because it's more than just a guy in front of a white wall. So what was the end result of all that effort? How did this new vision turn out? I'm the ghost of the most, baby. <laughs> I'm the friendliest ghost to ever! Eat your soul! Ah, for damn do I'm not talking to you! Oh my god, ghost dad! That's right! It was bad. It was really, really bad. I'm Ross Cool, and I'm here to say No inflection in your voice is A-OK -okay. With the leak of shadows, I'll make Gotham fall I have several identities, all of them doll I am Harvey Dent and my face is dead My evil motivation makes little sense I was a nice guy, but now I'm deranged Determining my future on the back of change And at the time, people weren't afraid to tell him so Website after website after website all echoed the same opinion This is pure shit It's not funny it's not entertaining. We want the Nostalgia Critic back. We went from an entertaining show mocking bad movies to a skit comedy show that spent half the time in black and white talking about how funny they were going to be, and the other half in color not being funny at all. To say it was disastrous would be an understatement. It was catastrophic for the website. If you recall from earlier the figures I'd quoted about taking in a quarter of a million dollars per year back in 2009, and then the Google figures which showed a massive drop in trending, you begin to get a better idea of just how bad this really was. It was so bad in fact, it was time to go to Indiegogo. Oh hello, I'm Doug Walker. You might know me as star, editor, writer, and director of such shows as The Nostalgia Critic. And I work for Channel Awesome, who also put me in shows like Sibling Rivalry, Bum Reviews, Video Game Confessions, and of course our anniversary films. We've also specialized in having other producers come together and form their own shows. And while there's many shows we're currently working on right now, one of them could use your help. And by help I mean money. So with Demo Reel being a complete abject failure, and the Nostalgia Critic possibly being shelved forever, along with the decrease in site traffic, it was time to generate some revenue. What better means than crowdfunding? And so the Indiegogo was launched with a lofty goal of $50,000. And just how much of that were they able to raise? $90,000. I think Doug's reaction sums it up best. Hi, Doug Walker here, and holy shit. I mean, holy shit. And so just what was created with all of that money, it must be amazing content. It must blow Demo Reel out of the water. This time, Doug is going to get it right. All right, catch those fish, boys. I would ask if this is the uh, cheap dollar store version of this game, but I can't honestly remember what the original version is called. Magnet fish. That's what it's called. I know. Just remember, this is Miss Stockholm's dinner for the night. I'm not kidding you. That is the show they created using the money raised from Indiegogo on a stage that was already pretty much completed with all of the props already pretty much assembled. As to where that $90,000 went, I think when you look at the data points I raised earlier, it's fairly obvious it went to living expenses because clearly it did not go into the quality of this show. One bag of general anesthetic, there you go. <laughs> Welcome, my friends, to Pop Quiz Hotshot. You are my friends, aren't you? 
Yes, just sure. nod or else I'll do something terrible to you. There you go, there you go. Yes, you know, I, I gotta say, I don't usually do this. I don't usually kidnap people and hold them against their will. But, you know, I just gotta say, ever since I was a child, well, I think nostalgia, I think happy thoughts, but when I think of childhood, this little nerve goes off because I didn't have that many friends. But you're my friends now. Within a short amount of time, Doug would go back to doing the Nostalgia Critic full time. But the damage was already done. The story of that guy with the glasses, the story of Doug Walker, is an interesting one. It's a man who created a personality online that grew up to enormous popularity, but somebody who was also dissatisfied with that. He didn't want to be typecast as that. He wanted to run away from his own creation, even at the detriment of his own success, even when it bombed his numbers. And rather than give in and go immediately back to what was successful, he would try and try again. When you look at the numbers for his game show, it's very clear to see there was no audience for it. Even though they had raised $90,000, they could barely get 90,000 viewers to watch it. And when compared to a Nostalgia Critic video of that exact same time period, it's clear exactly what his audience wanted. And for Doug, that has to be devastating, because it's quite obvious that he envisioned himself as moving beyond the character, as going into a new direction of trying his hand at actual comedy, of producing an actual web show that wasn't based around mocking other people's art, but creating his own art instead. Unfortunately for him, he just was not very good at it. This series, That Guy with the Glasses, is going to focus on the content creators that are associated with this website, and I chose to start with Doug Walker for a reason. He is the normalcy of the website. For all of Doug's faults and foibles, for all of his mistakes and missteps, he is, at his core, able to create entertaining content in a consistent manner. As we go forward and look at the other people who have contributed to the website, you will see a remarkable difference between somebody like the Nostalgia Critic and the people that will be featured in upcoming videos. Because the biggest difference between the people that are coming up and Doug himself can be summed up nicely with this video. As I said before, there's no words that can describe how thankful I am to all those who watched The Nostalgia Critic, who supported it, who continue to watch our stuff and support what we do. It means the world. It, to me, it is the world. Oh shit, the video is over. What, what, are you, uh, what are you still watching for? Unless you're a Patreon supporter, in which case, I told you I'd put this up. To the people that contacted me and didn't want their names up there, I omitted them. And for the people that asked me to change the name, I, I did so. It still shows up uh, in somewhat alphabetical order, but I changed it to the handle you asked me to put it as. So that was the first episode, and I wanted to lay some foundational work with it. Because anybody familiar with the website and the assorted cast of characters on it know how batshit crazy it's going to go from this episode into the very next one. Doug has a lot of things about him. He's made some mistakes. He's done some... He's had some fuck-ups. But it is nothing compared. Nothing compared to what's coming up. The individuals that are going to be featured later on have done some astonishingly stupid shit. Just mind-blowingly dumb fucking shit. And uh, it's going to be a completely different vibe between this video and the ones to come. So you can expect uh, one of these videos at the end of each month. There'll be about eight of them. That's uh, about the framework I have for it, eight including this one. I might make it a little bit more, depending on if I want to focus on, I, I guess, minor contributors, and maybe have an episode that's just dedicated to 10 different contributors or something like that. Thanks again to everyone on Patreon who supported me. Uh, hopefully the video series will be entertaining for you and you'll enjoy it. I know it was the choice for the poll that you guys wanted for a reward, so we'll see how it turns out once all the episodes are done, and you can kind of sit back and look at it. But again, I, I really am thankful for your support, and uh, hope you hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you liked the video. I think you'll like the next one more, I'm going to be honest, uh, <laughs> just based on who it is. You know, never forget, Juan but not forgotten. We're going to tell, <laughs> tell the story of Forky. So it should be should be a good time.